and welcome to the Six Five Summit. I'm Shelley Kramer, one of the founding partners of Futurum Research, and on behalf of my team at Futurum and the team at More Insights and Strategy, welcome. We're glad to have you. In this spotlight session, I had the pleasure of sitting down with David Konetsky, a Dell Fellow and Vice President in the Client Solutions Office of the CTO for Dell Technologies. Our conversation revolved around security and the realities of the current IT infrastructure that has expanded the number of potential attack surfaces. Kind of a timely conversation. We also looked at, at what goes into an effective security strategy and the technologies that enterprises can use to keep their companies safe. This timely conversation is one that you will not only enjoy, but I can promise you'll benefit tremendously from. Let's go have a listen. Hello, and welcome to this session of the Six Five Summit. I'm your host, Shelley Kramer, and I'm joined today by David Konetsky from Dell Technologies. And our conversation today is going to be focused on ML and AI and their role in securing new endpoint attack surfaces. So as a, as a prelude, you know, when you think about Dell Technologies and security, you might think about desktop or laptop, you know, what kind of hardware um, someone might be using. And But we're here today to talk about the security journey as a whole and, and sort of the security posture that protects endpoint devices throughout all aspects of the hardware journey. So with that, David, it's great to have you today. Welcome. Great to be here. Thanks. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about your role at Dell Technologies. Absolutely. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is David Konetsky. I'm a fellow in the Client Solutions Group at Dell Technologies. Uh, so we drive technology strategy, we drive technology incubations, uh, and we're the ones that provide differentiation into the, uh, into the product set. Uh, and so today, you know, like Shelley said, we'd love to talk about security and uh, it, AI and how that applies to security. And it's funny, you mentioned that um, you know, Dell Technologies is, is not necessarily considered a security company. And I like to think that we are not only a security company. Absolutely. Uh, Dell Technologies is all about providing solutions to our customers to empower them to reach their missions and also advance human progress. Absolutely. Providing those solutions uh, security is an inherent piece of that solution. Matter of fact, we call it intrinsic security because, uh, as you, know, you all know, in, the word intrinsic means essential and naturally belonging to. Well, and I like to think of security, and I and I think that everyone should think about security as as foundational. You know, every product, every process, everything needs to be built on a foundation with a security first mindset. And I, and, and that's, you know, I think that's similar to the th concept of intrinsic as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and we really take that approach. Uh, we have a very unique position in the industry in that we, uh, we produce the hardware. So therefore we develop and we control the firmware and the underlying operating environment that sits below the OS. And we can start there and create a secure foundation. And when I talked about us being a security company, you know, I, I look back historically, and we have a long history of pioneering and security. We were the we were the first PC OEM to put TPMs or the uh, trusted platform module on motherboards. We were the first, and we are still the only company that shipped a dedicated security processor to secure identities. Um, and as we look forward to what we're doing now, I mean, we're advancing all those capabilities. We're taking our, our BIOS and firmware protections and now producing indicators of attack below the OS. We're doing off-host verification to make sure that the platform is in uh, perfect shape and attested before we boot. So as you can see, you know, we're, we're very focused on providing that secure foundation. But then, of course, that's, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Shelley. No, you mentioned above and below the operating system. So I want to focus on that for just a minute. Can you explain more for us, you know, what that means and how that impacts a customer security posture overall? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, as I mentioned, we, we provide that secure foundation, but that's, of course, not, a, not all. Now, the environment, the operating environment then includes the op operating system and the applications. And, of course, um, everybody's moving to cloud native applications as well. So what do you do to build on that strong foundation to protect yourself? Well, you, you have to have um, industry-leading, state-of-the-art 
uh, advanced threat protection platforms. You need to have uh, security monitoring services uh, that watch your network and your endpoints uh, and your cloud access to be able to generate insights. And you have to have that um, cloud access uh, protection in place. And we do that through uh, partners. So our security monitoring is, of course, with one of our Dell Technologies companies, SecureWorks, industry leading uh, managed services and now software platform provider. And then we partner with folks like Netscope for, for uh, cloud access, uh, security brokering, and Carbon Black for advanced threat protection systems. And all of those, as we'll talk about in a minute, uh, use artificial intelligence, uh, that is machine learning and deep learning, to be able to keep one step ahead of the adversaries. And that's what I want to talk about now. <laughs> so talk with us a little bit about, you know, AI and ML and, and the role they're playing in the security landscape and how we're using them. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so AI, uh, so of course, AI is the umbrella term uh, for things that we do to, to analyze complex data sets. And tools like machine learning and deep learning have evolved to the point where it is enabling us to use them in interesting ways to give us the target to go look to go look for. Um, I want to make sure everybody understands that you know AI is not the the only uh, you know bullet in the gun for uh, so to speak. It's a tool. It's a tool that uh, makes it possible to stay ahead of the adversaries, and I'll describe that in just a moment. But as as you analyze complex data sets, uh, you're able to then generate patterns of uh, good behavior so that you can then look for anomalies. You can analyze um, that behavior and then look for indicators of potentially uh, malicious attack. Right. And, and then we, so we can, we can take all of the uh, events that we have and, and you know, to quote SecureWorks, I mean, they have billions and billions of events, uh, upwards of 7 billion events that come in daily. And you have to filter that down into meaningful uh, events or meaningful insights right. that you can then put into the chain. You, you need to have your researchers that develop algorithms and, and, and uh, um, take advantage of artificial intelligence. Then you need to have your security analysts who take those insights and figure out what uh, uh, are, your, are your targets to go or remediate. And then, of course, you have to have your developers that are building the platforms for all of this to run. So when I look at, at um, AI, like I said, it's, it's a fantastic tool for us. Um, but our adversaries are also using AI to be able to try to infiltrate our, our infrastructure, um, which is a, a very interesting um, opposite effect of, of the usage of AI. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to hold off on talking about that. I think we're going to wrap up our conversation with sort of a look at that and what's ahead. So one of the things that you mentioned, you know, you mentioned, um, you know, being having access to real time insights. And it, it, we've partnered with Dell in the last year and done some some research focused on, you know, security and the hardware journey and that sort of thing. And, and one of the things that I don't have the exact data points in my mind, um, but, you know, one of the things that we looked at is you know uh, when we talk to when we talk to IT leaders charged with security operations you know they absolutely knew you know how many attacks they had and they knew what to expect and everything else and and the people who had their finger on the pulse of what was actually happening on a daily basis and what they expected to happen moving forward were people who were using dashboards that afforded them real time insights into security operations of what was going on and conversely you know when we spoke with folks in IT who weren't using that kind of technology or any technology to be able to allow them access into the system. Um, you know, they had a very sort of Pollyanna-ish attitude in that, oh, you know, we think we're good and we haven't had <laughs> we haven't had any threats or anything like that. So it really is very interesting, but we are big believers here at Futurum that, you know, you don't know what you can't see and to operate without the benefit of actual insight into what's happening on a minute by minute, hour by hour basis as it relates to your systems is not really very smart. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and and more importantly, really <sighs> dangerous. So that's right. And and so I talked about um, our ability to generate indicators of attack below the OS. I talked about um, 
our partners like SecureWorks uh, and Netscope using artificial intelligence to uh, look for anomalies, look for detectors of malicious activity. Um, those are all just indicators though. Yeah. And your point, uh, those indicators have to be surfaced up into a, a, a security analytics uh, platform so that the uh, security practitioners can analyze those events that are determined to be the most valuable events uh, and, and then take uh, action, whether it's just um, determining that it's not malicious behavior, but if it is, then, then unpacking it, doing forensics, figuring out where the adversary came in, how they got in, how long they were there. Um, and then, as I, as I usually put it, is then cleaning up the mess, right? Um, removing them from the environment, um, putting uh, solutions or putting protections in place uh, so that it doesn't happen again, should there have been a vulnerability uh, that was detected. Uh, and then, of course, putting your monitoring systems in place uh, so that you can make sure that you don't have that kind of breach again. Uh, but to your point, that uh, security analytics platform has to be uh, robust and it has to be clear and it has to give you, it has to point you to the uh, events and the indicators that are the most important for you to be addressing. So a great example is a, a, uh, a security indicator that has zero history of anyone using it in the past is probably a little less important, you know, urgent, I should say, than one that is known to be a vulnerability that is being uh, exploited at the current time. Right. So having that insight is very important to understand how you attack the problem. Yeah, and you know the the thing too about the benefits of machine learning and AI um, that I don't think we touched on is you know the ability for continuous learning. You know, as as the systems look at the data, sees these ma this massive amount of data coming in, you know, the system automatically gets smarter. And and it, so you want to talk about that a little bit? I don't want to, you know, there's so much about this that I don't know the specifics of, but I know that's a huge benefit of AI and ML. Oh, absolutely. And then, so I, I talked about um, at the various high, very highest level that uh, using AI to do analysis of complex data sets to be able to generate known patterns of good behavior, um, patterns of malicious behavior, be able to uh, uh, form detectors as, as SecureWorks um, works. They have a set of detectors that, that pull out uh, insights. Um, but the thing is the, the, um, the trap that many fall into is to think that once you have a, uh, a, a, an algorithm in place and you're analyzing a data set, that you're now in steady state. You know, the reality is that that data set continues to evolve. Right. Uh, the reality is that uh, um, you know, adversaries are continuing to watch the environment to figure out how they can either um, stay you know, metaphorically below the radar or how they can mimic the behavior of, of uh, an authorized user. So your algorithms or your analysis has to continue to evolve. And so that's the whole circle of uh, generating insights, using those insights, doing forensics, and then feeding that information back into the model. So the model is never done. Um, and, and we also have to get comfortable with the fact that the model is never done. You know, so uh, like, like any good engineer, like any good data scientist, they always want to try to find that, that perfect um, algorithm or that perfect, you know, get the perfect data set so that they can come up with the right answer. And, uh, you know, I am a firm believer that in, in many forms of engineering and especially security, uh, we're going to have a great answer. You know, we're never going to have a perfect answer. <laughs> well, it, I don't know that it's perfect. Maybe it's perfect. What I'm thinking about is finished, mm. right? And I think that, you know, we talk about this a lot as it relates to digital transformation. And sometimes people are surprised when I say your digital transformation journey is never done. You know, I mean, it, it is a journey and technology has evolved at an incredibly rapid pace. By the way, it will continue to do so. And so, you know, what our mission today, whether you're an engineer or whether you're an analyst or whether, you know, you're a project manager, our mission in, in the world today is to understand that change is a constant and evolution is a constant and these journeys are ongoing. And, you know, and we use technology to help us do better and be smarter and do things that 
more rapidly than we can do ourselves and and all of that sort of thing but we're always going to be evolving and changing and testing and measuring and implementing and, and for those of us who love change that's exciting for those of us who don't love change and who want that perfect ending um it's kind of it requires a little bit of a change in mindset that's right that's right um and <clears throat> what you just said um reminds me of something uh, so it's that, uh, that that perfect ending. I mean, we, we look at we look at uh, artificial intelligence in in different ways, and and some of it also is the application of uh, ML and deep learning to create um, responses. So it's one thing to to know when you have um, not that those it's a problem, but sometimes when you have let's say it is a breach, other times you know, you just have an inefficiency in your process. Being able to apply um, AI to an automation system so that you can analyze the insights that are being generated and then generate the right response starts to free up um, IT personnel to be able to attack the more difficult problems, digital transformation problems in their environment. Um, and, and right now we're in a, an interesting state in that um, everybody's interested in automation, but they don't want to let go. So it's like, yes, give me the automation, but let me hit the button. And eventually, as you know, if we have this conversation three years from now, I'm sure we'll be having a very different conversation. Where professionals are becoming much more comfortable with, <clears throat> with automation and letting the system and trusting the, the system that, that they have given policy to, and that the automation is actually going to benefit their users. And you have to do that automation in a way that it doesn't, um, uh, it doesn't stop or, or limit uh, productivity, that it actually encourages productivity. And it may, have, it may have users working differently than they're used to working. I mean, you may go from a local session to a remote session. You may go from one cloud access to a different you know, device, uh, cloud access on a different device. But the point is that through automation and remediation, we're gonna be able to fix all of your problems in a transparent way and keep you productive. Well, and yeah, and when you can use automation to to kind of get rid of, you don't get rid of them, but they're being handled in a different way. Those those mundane, those repetitive tasks that take time and attention, and and you know we're just so used to doing those things that that when you factor that out, it's so exciting to see you know people. I mean, we do a lot of work in the automation space, and it's so exciting to see people you know talk about the trepidation that they had going into their automation journey and then you know talking with them a few months later and it's just like oh my gosh and you know their eyes are opened as to the possibilities here and you know now we've been able to do this but what about if we automate this and it really is kind of getting that toe in the water and taking a little bit of a dive and and a, a, a little bit of a leap of faith you know oh this technology really is pretty cool and um, but it's exciting to see people progress along that journey and and also really exciting to see them, you know, being able to focus on, as you said, the more mission critical tasks, the thing that really does, the things that require humans and critical thinking and that sort of thing. So it's, so it really is, and we're at an interesting part of our journey right now, especially as it relates to automation and the benefits of AI and ML, you know, that it can bring for That's sure. Absolutely right. And when I, when I think about, um, you know, what we are working on for the future of compute and, and the way things are going to evolve and change. Uh, and, you know, we're going to have many of the mundane tasks automated and we're going to have the delivery of workspaces being very different paradigm. Uh, that changes the whole security game. Right. right. Well, you know, what we, where we used to be focused on Securing a uh, securing the platform and securing a desktop and securing the applications running on that desktop, that whole paradigm is changing, and, and we see it with cloud native applications today, and that will continue to evolve. And as we become uh, more automated and flexible, you know, you'll see the workspaces evolve with the user, and um, you know, based on their context, you know, their security posture, the device they're on, what their entitlements are, and what they're allowed to do. They'll be delivered a dynamic workspace that um, will move with them, yeah. and it'll follow them through their day. Now that changes the whole security paradigm. You know, no longer can I have, uh, can I count on, um, 
classic desktop-based advanced threat protection systems. I now have to uh, be much more concerned about protecting cloud access, protecting usage patterns in the cloud, you know, which is where I talked about we've started to uh, pioneer um, the automation or the AI uh, uh, placed onto cloud access, file access, and, and user behavior in, in that realm because your, your telemetry changes, right? It comes from your workspace. It no longer comes from a, uh, a set platform. Uh, and so again, to your point, people are going to have to evolve. They're gonna to have to be comfortable with change. They're gonna to have to be comfortable with coming up with a great answer and then iterating on that answer as we learn more. Right, right. Well, I have confidence we'll get there. It'll just be different. <laughs> right. And you know what? We really have no choice. I mean, it's not a matter of, you know, oh, you either are on team change or team no change. It's really that we all need to be on team change because there really is not another option. So, so I would love to talk a little bit about supply chain. And, you know, I, I, we talked earlier about intrinsic security and how Dell technology builds security into its hardware above and below the, below the OS. But what about supply chain? Mm -hmm. That's a, I'm glad you brought that up. So you know, take that metaphor again, that we're building, uh, we're building a house or, you know, we're building a, an environment based on a secure foundation and then, you know, layering our productivity, productivity tools on top. But how did, how did that, that, environment uh, get developed? How did that environment get delivered? I mean, we really need to go back. That's why supply chain security is so important that, you know, the security of the, of the device and the um, workspace itself is, is uh, a result of everything that happened before. So at Dell, we go all the way back to, of course, you have to have a world-class uh, secure development life cycle. So as you're developing the tools and as you're developing the software and the hardware, uh, you're building in that security again intrinsically into the platform and into the software. Then once it's when it's developed, um, how is it delivered? Making sure that uh, we have uh, you know, tamper-proof containers and tamper-proof boxes. Um, and now we've even advanced that further so that we can start to do programmatic verification of pieces in the device itself. Uh, so we can make sure that what uh, landed at the customer site is what was built in the factory. We've launched that with our PowerEd servers, and we're going to continue to advance that capability. And then as we go forward, being able to do uh, uh, verification, attestation, and then, of course, remediation, so that cyber resilience becomes a part of the supply chain. And so as you can see, it's not one person's job, right? It's it's. Everyone has to think about secure supply chain. Everybody has to think about security intrinsically built into the, pro into the products. And our customers expect us to deliver secure and attestable products to them. That's something that they shouldn't have to worry about. And that's something where that uh, we excel and uh, differentiate still. You know, we've done, uh, we've done some research um, with SAS in the last couple of years, a couple different research studies. And um, we talked with um, 4,000 people, 2,000 from the brand side and 2,000 from the consumer side. And one of the things that came through loud and clear from consumers is, is security, privacy and security. And they feel very much like they feel like it's a runaway train and they something about which they have absolutely no control but quite a lot of fear about and which is understandable and justified um but i think that from the brand side when you approach this with a you know again security is a foundational thing and when customers understand that everything a company does is with a security first mindset. I think that goes a long way toward allaying their fears that this is, uh, you know, it really is a very big problem on the consumer side. So I think that it's an important part of, you know, what it is Dell Technologies or any company does is to, you know, really lean into all things security because it, it is something that is top of mind for most consumers. Oh, absolutely. And as we watch what's going on in uh, small business today, um, you know, it's it, it, the way we approach small business is the same way that, that we can approach consumer. Um, you know, of course, as I'm sure a lot of you heard, small business is a fairly large target for cyber adversaries. 
they have less sophistication and usually have less um, protections in place. Right. So Dell is really focused on small business and, and providing them solutions and mostly turnkey solutions so that you know we don't rely on the fact that they have security practitioners because often they don't. Right. That looks just like a consumer. And so it'd be very easy for us. I mean, our, our, our global services today are organized so that we can have um, consumer services or small business, a very small number of uh, people in a tenant. And that's the infrastructure that you need that doesn't exist a lot of places to be able to approach the consumer security problem. Right. It, it should, you know, it, I mean, our vision is um, that, that's, that consumer and small business uh, environment should be a complete no worry, no touch, you know, kind of zero IT kind of thing. We take care of that for you because that's where we bring value. You know, speaking of Speaking of small businesses and actually businesses of all size, and and you know we started talking about this a little bit earlier, but you know you can't um, you can't read any of your news sources today without hearing of yet another ransomware attack or another hacking, and um, you know we're coming off of the massive Colonial Pipeline attack, and we're still finding damage as it relates to the solar winds attack and the microsoft exchange i mean it's just like the list is so long um but you know i want to talk a little bit about you know about the cybersecurity space and and the reality that this is big business for threat actors and you know and and there's so much money to be made and so so I'd love to look talk just a minute as we wrap up our conversation about what's happening you know what what our adversaries are doing as it relates specifically to the use of sophisticated technology like AI and ML and how do we counter that yeah it's it's certainly evolved over over the last many years and uh, we used to approach it, uh, um, security analysts used to approach it and try to uh, cluster adversarial behavior uh, or you know, cyber criminal um, approaches. And that is becoming more and more ineffectual. Uh, the reason is the cyber adversaries are becoming much more uh, sophisticated and they're changing their approach. They're changing their modus operandi on every single attack. So it's difficult to, to pattern that malicious behavior end-to-end uh, -end, and then reapply it to a new attack. What you have to do is break that up into, um, as I mentioned before, SecureWorks uses uh, detectors. So break that up into the components of an attack and be able to put those components together to define malicious behavior. Um, the, the adversaries are using AI, uh, you know, certainly uh, deep learning, to analyze uh, a tremendous amount of data coming from endpoints, because endpoints do represent a large majority of, of the uh, um, initial attack points in, in right. region. Uh, and so they're using uh, AI to be able to do analysis to figure out what, what does this person's behavior look like and how can I model that person's behavior while I'm getting into the, into the systems that I need to get into. You know, obviously the thing that's, uh, a consistent um, piece of the attack through many of these recent breaches um, is uh, whether it be stolen credentials or um, you know living off the land, you know acting as a as an authorized user. Right. And so uh, you know the way that we need to combat that to stay ahead of them is to be able to watch for that anomalous activity because even though they're acting like that authorized user, they're not doing everything um, in a way that that authorized user would do it because obviously they're trying to get to systems that that person or persons may not naturally have access to right. or data that they don't naturally um, exfiltrate uh, from their from their resting places. And so watching things like that, as well as many other indicators, will give us a step ahead to find out when they're in the environment. Because usually, especially with these larger ones, there's a, there's a dwell time from the time that the adversary establishes themselves in the enterprise until they actually launch the attack. And uh, the, the goal is to identify them uh, in the network and remove them from the network before they're able to launch the attack. Important stuff. 
<laughs> well, David Kanetsky, thank you so much for joining me this morning and talking about what's going on with Dell Technologies and, and security and specifically, you know, the focus that you are shining on AI and ML in security systems. I think it's a, a always a fascinating conversation and I really appreciate you joining us in this 6.5 Summit event and um, thank you very much. Thank you, Shelly. It's great being here. This is Shelly Kramer from Futurum Research. Thank you for joining this session of the 6.5 Summit. The conversation with Dell Technologies' David Kanetsky was a fascinating one and we've got one more session today featuring Tom Anderson, the VP of Red Hat's Ansible Automation Platform. We then finish off the day with a live Q&A. This is one conversation you'll want to be sure and be a part of, so check your agenda for a link to view and participate. We'll see you there. <laughs>